Good morning, everyone. It's good to have y'all here on this bright, beautiful, sunshiny day. I'd like to extend a welcome to you all here in person and for the ones joining us at Worship Online. Uh, thank you for coming and joining us at St. James United Methodist Church. I am Gerald Gilkey, and I'll be your liturgist today. And behind me on the piano, I have Laura Lynn Christensen. Alan Jones is our music director. Stephanie Gilkey is our pastor, but she's not here today. But we're fortunate to have Galen Doherty here as our speaker today. If you would, pull out your Connect card and fill out the front and the back. Pay special attention to the back. There's a few good things on there that I think we uh, as a congregation should be interested in. Uh, I want to plug the youth summer camp because as being part of the youth program, uh, I think it's important that we plug that one. But the rest of them are just as, as, as uh, important. And if you would pull out your uh, memory verse, we will recite that. And the memory verse today is uh, from Psalms 23, 4, and it reads, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We have an announcement today. I have Lynn that's going to come up and, uh, and uh, tell us uh, some good uh, stuff here. So Lynn Wilkinson, come on up. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Good. Um, it's important to pull out the right notes. My name is Lynn Wilkinson. I knew that part. And I want to update you a little bit on stewardship and uh, things that we've accomplished and some things that we need to accomplish. First of all, I want to put forth a disclaimer because when I talk in terms of dollars, what I mean is ish. <laughs> I'm not specific. Um, I'm more of a general flyover view. Uh, <laughs> Be that as it may, that's, that's what I mean. If I mention $2,430.27, what I mean is 27 cents ish. So anyway, um, little Johnny was sitting in the classroom and um, the teacher made a bold remark when she said, um, or he said um, that it is a physical impossibility for a whale to swallow a human being. And little Johnny started raising his hand and, and she said, yes, little Johnny. And he said, uh, what about Jonah? Jonah was swallowed by a whale. And she said, well, um, there you go making assumptions again, little Johnny. And um, I'm just gonna state that it's a physical impossibility for a whale to swallow a man. And little Johnny said, well, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah about that. And she said, there you go, making assumptions again. <laughs> How do you know Jonah's not in hell? She said, what are you going to do if he is in hell? He said, well, then you ask him. <laughs> Uh oh, I'm in trouble now. Somewhere. I'm out of control. Congratulations on St. James and your new sign. I don't know if you've seen it out here or not, but it's up. It's operating. And I understand Elaine, is she here? She's not here. She's going to have to go to school to learn to operate it. So, anyway, that's a good thing. Praise be. I'm so glad that we have that done. Um, we raised a little over $20,000. The conference pitched in, I think, about $8,400-ish. And so um, we raised about 29 total, including the conference uh, help. The sign cost was approximately $23,000. Um, um, we've, had, we've had some other issues, too. We had some foundation issues. 
Um, we've taken care of that. So uh, all in all, it's a good thing. The, um, the parsonage is sold. We netted about 260 out of that ish. Um, that'll be in the CD soon. Um, at one point, we're going to be adopting a uh, housing allowance. And I've, I've made the changes. Let me show you this great artwork. If you'll notice here, we have um, Huff and Puff, that's what I call him, little Huff and Puff here. The coal car, which fuels Huff and Puff, is, is our, actually our operating budget. We have the alarm system, which is paid, the signage, which is paid, and ha, which is housing allowance. And um, so that was changed from parsonage to housing allowance. Um, but anyway, we're still using this little analogy through this year. We'll have some things that come up that need to be addressed, and we'll, we'll add them to our train cars as needed. Um, but right now, we have more paid than anything else. Now, with the housing allowance, which is going to be about $2,400 a month, um, you'll have to excuse me. I, these glasses, I, I got uh, LASIK surgery Friday, and so I can see like an eagle over at Madison over there. I just can't read anything. And so you know how that goes. But anyway, with the housing allowance, we're, we're looking at about 2400 a month. We'll take, take on that responsibility um, later this year. There's some debate as to when. Um, and if we have enough in a CD or in savings, then we can offset that cost with the interest. So in fact, we'll endow that. That's the intent. So we still need to raise probably another twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars or so um, in the housing allowance. So that is a need. That's a concern. That's going to stay on this little car right here. And so we'll continue with this little analogy. That's all right with y'all for the time being. Um, and I know that. That with go, go back yes. to the mic. Go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, hang on a minute. But thank you. the The biggest concern that I have going forward, um, and this is a land concern, I will tell you that much, is in our operating budget, because that's our base, that's our core, and our church is a wonderful mission-bound church. Uh, if you look at all the things we do, the, it's not just a building. I mean, the missions that work that we do, the sewing go, the backpacks, the uh, food pantry, all of these things. Um, it's so neat to see so much activity um, come out of this church. And the operating budget is our day-to-day -day, um, physical financial responsibility. So I would ask each and every member, and I counted through our directory, there's about 120 different families here, but if each and every one would be in prayer for the operating budget and for what your gift is, and believe me, your gift is so appreciated. Don't ever think it isn't, because it is. And so I would just ask that we be in prayer for our, um, our gift that we do as a, on a regular basis, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, however we do it, that we just be in prayer for that. Because I know that inflation doesn't skip St. James. And you've all heard the numbers. You've seen bread go up. You've gone to the grocery store. And there's nothing more real than going to the grocery store. Nancy, for the two of us, spent $145 at HEB the other day. So it's real. It's here. It's real. And it's going to affect our church. So with that in mind, over the coming weeks, um, set yourself a target, maybe May 1st, something like that, and be in prayer for your gift uh, for St. James. 
And uh, just remember how important and how appreciative everyone is for that gift. Um, the youth camp, Gerald mentioned that. That's not even in a rail car here because I thought that was small enough that uh, we can meet that challenge. That's $255 a kiddo. Um, they need about funding for about six of them. So $1,500, $1,600, surely we can do that. So I didn't put it on the railroad car because by the time I got through drawing it, I figured we'd have the money raised. So uh, anyway, keep that in mind. But the operating budget is our main concern for the moment. We don't have any emergencies. Well, if we do, we don't want to talk about them. Nobody wants to hear about sewer problems. Uh, but anyway, um, we don't have any emergencies that I'm aware of at the moment with the church that we have to address financially. Um, I do know that we have some, uh, during our transition, we have a lot of money going in, a lot of money going out. Elaine, I'm sure, has some scary moments, you know, where she's looking at the, the checkbook and you see the dip and she's writing big checks. And so, um, so the operating budget um, becomes more and more important. So be in prayer for that. That's all I ask. Thank you very much. Let's thank Liam for that announcement. Very important. Are there any other announcements? If so if not, then uh, let's go ahead and uh, turn it over to Alan. Opening oh, prayer. Oh, we got to do a prayer. That's right. Opening prayer. <laughs> Bow with me. Heavenly Father, as we gather this Sunday morning, we are reminded of the privilege it is to come before you. Your throne, your throne as community of believers. We thank you for the gift this day, a day of rest, reflection, and renewal in your presence. We lift our worship to you, Lord. We bring our praises, our songs, and our hearts that long to honor and glorify your name. May our worship be pleasing to you, Lord, and may it draw us closer to your heart. As we open your word, we ask you for your wisdom and insight to permeate our hearts and our minds. Speak to us through scriptures, Lord, and reveal your truths in ways that transform us from the inside out. We also lift those who are in need today, the sick, the lonely, the weary, and the lost. May your healing power touch those who are hurting, and may your love surround those who are struggling. Use us, Lord, as instruments of your grace and compassion to those in our community who need your touch. As we depart from this place after our time of worship, May we carry with us the message of hope, the power of your word, and the warmth of your fellowship. Bless us, Lord, as we go forth to be salt and light in the world. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Our call to worship this morning is, He has made me glad. Would you stand and join us as we sing together? <clears throat> as we recite the Apostles' Creed. It's on 882 if you have your book. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Except the kids. Luke, come on up here. I've only got two today. Do I have volunteers for big children? <laughs> Any of you feeling especially young? No. Okay, fine. Oh. Ah, there we go. Someone was brave. Come on up here, Don. You're looking really, really immature today. All right. Okay. Uh, disclaimer up front. Just about... Two minutes ago, three minutes ago, my planned sermon totally went out the window. So this is completely off the cuff, but I had an inspiration. And uh, contrary to what people believe or may get the impression of, Jennifer and I actually usually plan these things several days in advance. <laughs> okay? Um, it's, today we're going to talk about trust, but I'm modifying what I'm talking about. You all know we had an eclipse this last week, right? Okay. Are you supposed to look at that eclipse? <coughs> Only if what? Oh. Okay, but you're not even supposed to look at totality unless you do something, right? No, you're supposed to keep your glasses on during totality. But, you know, Jennifer will kill me if I don't say, you know, using the, uh, thinking out of the box, using the good book, we have some glasses. Okay. Originally, this, this lesson was going to be real simple. And it was going to be that you trust the glasses to make it safe to look at the sun. And... In the same way, we should trust God's word to make it safe to know what God wants from us. But I'm going to take us a little bit deeper in that. This is where I may get in trouble. Because it dawned on me that as Methodists, we have something called the quadrilateral. Yes. And I think the quadrilateral is maybe a little bit better uh, analogy with those glasses Okay, for discerning what God wants us to do. So, the two older children, no cheating. I need to know from the two younger ones, do we know what the quadrilateral is? Have we heard the term quadrilateral? I know you have. Have you, Luke? Is it ringing any bells? What is the quadrilateral? Oh, well, what did you say? Well, you're right. That actually, yes, that's exciting. <laughs> okay. Do you know what the Methodist crowd role is? Not really? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Now we're going back to um, remedial. Okay. The quadrilateral is a way of examining God's word. Okay, it's discerning what the Lord's will would be. At least that's how I'm describing it. It consists of scripture, tradition, reason, and experience. Owen, can you give me an, ex uh, an example of reason in that, in the way we use it? Well, maybe, but how people reason, how you reason, okay? It's your thinking, all right? 
What would scripture be? Any of you two? What is scripture? Thank you. Yes, it is the Bible. It's, Lord, it's the Lord's word. Okay. What would tradition be? And I know I'm throwing these out of order, but what? Cultural tradition in a maybe. Yeah, in a way. Tradition is going to be how. Let, all right. Let's take. Uh, let's take Genesis one one. Okay. In the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? That's scripture. Tradition is going to be, how have people interpreted that in the past? Okay? Now, reason is going to be, and this is where I get a little foggy, but it's going to be why people have interpreted it that way in the past. Okay? And then the last one is going to be experience is going to be your personal experience in your life and how you think that applies to you. Okay? I'm really waiting. If I get this wrong, please speak up. <laughs> I'm still learning. Those four methods are how we're supposed to discern the Lord's will and what he's trying to teach us using God's word. Okay? That is just like using the glasses to be able to see that eclipse and see something you can't normally see with your own eyes. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? <laughs> Completely off the cuff. So, but anyway. Do you all have any questions? None? None? You know, as a teacher, I feel like if my students don't have questions, I've failed. I haven't confused them enough. <laughs> yes? So far, it's been good. So far, actually, it was, it was really good. I woke up earlier than I expected for some reason, though. Yes, I <coughs> No, I did not. I took 15 minutes. I was lazy today. Okay, anyway. Ah, oh, okay. Let's go ahead and bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for today, Father, and thank you for, for allowing us to realize that we do need to look at your word, that we do need to examine it and learn what you want us to, to learn as a as a church as a group but also individually just within our own lives and father thank you for being with us thank you for shepherding us and father please watch over us as we go forward so that we can do your will in christ's name we pray amen, amen. all right okay i appreciate that y'all now here comes the other part of it we didn't know what the the noisy offering is until right now because it wasn't included in the email. So it is the UWF Stop Human Trafficking. I think that is self-explanatory. Here we go. There you go. There you go. Don, would you like some help? Come on. There you go, sir.
You ask me how I know he lives? He lives within my heart. It's number 310 in your hymnal. Would you stand and join us as we sing together? <coughs> As we go into our prayer time, let's take a minute, and if you have any individuals that are on your heart or any conditions that are on your heart, um, give you a chance to speak those. Heavenly Father, as we come to you this morning, we thank you that we can be together here to lift our voices to you and to worship you and to hear your word. You've heard these concerns, Lord. We pray particularly for General Conference, which will be beginning in nine days from now, with many important decisions to be made. And we pray for the unification team that is working toward unifying three of the conferences in Texas to merge into one conference. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We pray that you guide us in all that we do. And now we request that everyone join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch Him, and say that we love Him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to Our New Testament reading today is coming from 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And we're reading from the NRSV version. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that this is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is that this, when He is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have his, this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one divide, deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. This is God's word. Thanks be to God.
the gospel reading. God's reading today is from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. And again, it's from the NRSV. Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do you doubt, why do you doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of boiled fish. He took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was with, still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses the prophets and the songs must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead, and on the third day, and the repentance and forgiveness of the sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Lord, the Lord, the, excuse me, the word of God for the people of God. Be to God. You may be seated. Our New Testament reading this morning is found in Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our power or piety we, made him, we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the, the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. This is God's word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please come forward. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we have to do the sermon. <laughs> That's a sneaky way to get through the service quickly. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may I be the mouthpiece for words coming from you. Please open our ears so that we can hear and understand what you have to tell us. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this morning. Um, if my back holds out, we'll get through this. <laughs> In his book, The Price Tags of Life, C. Roy Angel relates a story told by Methodist Bishop Cavanaugh of how he and a local physician teamed up to be a powerful force for good in the church and their community. Over the time they had become good friends and tried to work together to help out, but the physician was a skeptic when it came to the resurrection and the um, return of Jesus to earth, etc. One day the doctor pulled his buggy up to the curb and asked Kavanaugh if he would ride. 
with him because he wanted to talk a little bit. He then asked the bishop, how on earth can you spend your whole life telling all these tall tales about God's love and Jesus' resurrection? Well, the bishop thought for a minute, then responded, if you had cancer, and somebody came to you with a prescription that provided a quick cure, what would the world think of you if you didn't take that same prescription to every patient of yours that has cancer? Well, the physician thought for a minute, and then he said, they would say I was a fool. That discussion led to the physician's repentance and conversion. And after that, they teamed up and just did wonders for the good of the church and the community. We'll come back to this again a little bit later. I want to back up just a little bit from the scripture that Alan read from Acts 3, 12 through 19. The prelude to this is that Peter and John were entering the temple to pray when they ran into a man who had been crippled from birth that every day somebody brought him to the temple to beg for money from those that were going into the temple. Well, Peter told the man, I don't have a nickel to give you, but what I do have, I will give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Well, the man's feet and ankles became firm. He jumped to his feet and walked and started to dance around. Can't you just hear the shouted questions of the crowd? How did you do that? Did you just go over and pull him up? and suddenly he could walk? What was it you said to him? We heard you call a man's name. What name was that? Did you call on the name of that dead Jewish rabbi from Nazareth that was called Jesus? Is that the same young carpenter that the Roman soldiers crucified? How can a dead man, a dead man's name, cure somebody? Especially that dead man, because we saw him buried. In a sermon posted on Sermon Central, by Reverend Ernie Arnold, a Nazarene minister. And I often go to Sermon Central to help me out on putting sermons together. He explained Peter's address to the crowd by making several points. And I'll try to address those points. The points were, it wasn't us, it was Jesus. It was Jesus, and by the way, he was innocent. It was Jesus, and by the way, he is alive. It was Jesus, and by the way, he opened the door of repentance and forgiveness. 
Peter knew what he was doing in addressing the crowd. First, he referred, as Alan read, to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. To get their attention, he was saying that Jesus had truly been sent by God. Peter then quickly assured the crowd that he and John were not responsible for the healing of the man with the disabilities, but that it was Jesus who was responsible. Surely there were a lot of people in the crowd who had witnessed the crucifixion of Jesus and his interment in the tomb. It couldn't be Jesus that was responsible for the healing of the man because they knew that he was dead. But during his address, Peter assured the crowd that they, Peter and John, were witnesses to the fact that Jesus was resurrected and walked among them. Jesus indeed is risen. The healing of the crippled man was not due to the piety of Peter and John. It wasn't about a secret power that they possessed. It was all about Jesus, period. Case closed. Then Peter went on to talk about Jesus and the fact that he was innocent of charges brought against him. He didn't cut the audience any slack. Jesus is the one you handed over to Pilate. Pilate even tried to release him, but you refused instead of agreeing to the release of an innocent man, you ask to have a murderer released. You kill the source of life whom God then raised from the dead. We, Peter and John, as I said, were witnesses to the resurrection. Well, at this point, I think the expected or anticipated thing would be that Peter would tell those responsible for condemning an innocent man to death or destined to rot in hell forever. But he didn't do that. He did what Jesus would do by telling them to love their neighbors as themselves. Peter called them brothers and sisters, or I believe in the translation that Alan read, friends. And then he told them that he knew that they acted in ignorance along with their leaders who also acted in ignorance. Then, he asked them to repent and turn back so that their sins could be wiped away. Going on down to Acts chapter 4, verse 4, it states that many of those who heard the message of Peter believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. A pretty good testimony. You know, to me, this was a fitting example of an approach covered in a book, one of my real favorites of all time, that is called The Celtic Way of Evangelism. Now, for some reason, most of the Eastern evangelism calls for preaching repentance, having the individual repent, 
And then over time, if you act right and so forth, you can be accepted as a friend if you do everything to please them. Celtic evangelism, on the other hand, teaches that first you establish relationships, then you preach repentance and works toward getting the individual becoming a Christian. To me, that just makes an awfully lot of sense on it. Well, at the beginning of my talk, I told of the bishop and the physician who became a force for good in their church and community. And I believe this is really how evangelism works. Build a relationship based on friendship and trust. Simply tell your evangelism story. Ask forgiveness and repent. And good works will follow. About, what's it been, about 10 days ago, that Royce and I had the opportunity to go over to uh, St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Midland for a seminar on caring congregation missions. And I was pretty well blown away by the presentation on that essentially and this was something that was created by the uh, Church of the Resurrection in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. It is a United Methodist Church, probably one of the very largest congregations in the United States. They have about 10,000 average attendance each Sunday. But what the, the bottom line is what they are doing is training church leaders to use a team approach that empowers pastors and laity working together to build care ministries to effectively support their congregations and communities. And this basically starts, first off, uh, you know, if you look at your bulletins, we probably have, oh, what, uh, at least a hundred um, prayer concerns back there. But do we just leave it up to the pastor to follow up on those prayer concerns. You know, we should each be following up. I know several times I have put a prayer concern in and I can honestly say that nobody has ever come to me and says, well, hey, how is so-and-so doing on it? So we plan to sit down with Pastor Stephanie and go over a lot of these details in the near future of this seminar and see if we can't start something uh, on caring congregation ministries here at St. James where we can address concerns for those on our prayer list, for our congregation, and the, for, for the community at large on it. You know, translating this whole thing to my personal experience, I want to let everybody know that from the time I was six years old, my parents always called all seven of us siblings together each night, 
they would sit and read a chapter in the Bible to us. We would all kneel and pray before we went to bed each night. And that practice lasted as long as my parents lived. And I'm pretty sure that my mother, even after she was terminal, had she been physically able, she would have gotten out of bed each night, knelt and prayed on it. And you know, to me, I think, think that is one thing that has really kept me active in church affairs. So in summary, it wasn't Peter and John who were responsible for healing of the lame man, but it was Jesus. He was innocent. He is alive. And he opened the door of repentance and forgiveness for all of us. Let us pray. Creator and Redeemer, help us to show compassion. Then let all know that it was Jesus, he was innocent, he is alive, and he offers us all forgiveness if we repent. Amen. Now as we get ready for our invitational him. I want to invite you, if you feel so moved, to uh, come forward to the altar and pray, and if you wish, we'll be happy to talk with you. Alan, would you stand with us, please? I need prayer and offering and I would like to say that I am glad that we have stopped to let uh, Galen <laughs> bring that message to us because it was wonderful. <laughs> Loving Creator, we come together to present our tithes and offerings. We are reminded of the profound love with which you have called us your children. Help us recognize that our generosity and stewardship of the resources you've entrusted to us are a sign of our commitment to this holy transformation. May these offerings we bring today be a reflection of your love for you and our desire to be faithful stewards of your blessings. Bless our giving and guide us in our using of these gifts wisely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Our final hymn today is Great is Thy Faithfulness. It's number 140 in your hymnal. Would you join us as we sing together? Jesus. Now go forth in peace and remember as you walk out the doors and enter the parking lot, you're entering, entering the mission field. You're dismissed, dismissed and God bless you. Amen. Amen.
Good music, sweetheart. He's a professional. 